Perfect. Hello everyone, I'm Valentin Drouet, I'm a modeling engineer at Metroscope. And today I'm going to be talking about how we build digital twins for AI-based root cause analysis. So at Metroscope, our goal is to fight plants energy waste and extensive volume of, ma of maintenance by using our knowledge of the system to detect failures and prevent them. We are a software company from 2018 with offices in Germany and the USA. And today we are currently uh, equipped on the complete nuclear fleet in France, which is six, 56 reactors, and also nuclear reactors in Belgium and Canada, um, a gas, a combined gas turbine uh, in France, and we are moving on to uh, equip data centers. So what is our technology? Metroscope is a knowledge-based AI. Um, so we want to rely on two core features. First, a knowledge base, which is uh, for us a digital twin embedding, embedding all the expertise on the system that we are equipping. And secondly, an in inference engine that is going to do the diagnosing of the plants. So on the right here, you have a kind of a synthetic view of how we work. So we first, everything relies on the measurements that we get from the plants. And then we feed the measurements to a numerical model of the plants. And this is what I'm going to talk to you uh, today. Uh, and from that, we get an expected behavior that we can compare to the actual behavior from the measurements and we get symptoms. So this is a very common process um, uh, for analyzing what's happening on a, on, a, on a process. But at Metroscope, we do one next step is that we want not only to find symptoms, but to do root cause analysis. So that means going back to the cause of a symptom and be able to explain and tell our customer that, for instance, there is a leak in, in, in a valve or there is a heat exchanger that is not working fine. And then the maintenance can take over. Uh, and so for that, we not only use our digital twin to, um, to get the expected behavior of the plants, but we also use our digital twin to get the possible states in which the plant is because of failures. So we want to add failures based on the uh, expertise that we have on the process that we are working on. And then with this uh, failure modeling, we can try and match with an inference engine, uh, try and match what symptom, what failures could explain the symptoms that we see. And that is what we call diagnosis. And um, I just want to stress here that Metroscope software uses existing sensors to analyze the plant's performance. So what we do is that we are able with the inferential engine to see very small uh, signals and be able on, on, the, on the complete set of measurements that we have on the plant and be able to recognize the signature of a given failure and then be able to tell our client that there is a potential uh, failure here even if it's in a part of the system that, that is not fully uh, uh, equipped with sensors. So why is it necessary to use a digital twin? Most of our competitors actually use statistical modeling for, uh, for doing alerting and uh, diagnosis on, uh, on power plants. So it's true that uh, the production of a digital twin comes with uh, several downsides. So first, it takes a lot of time to build uh, with the clients, we are working with uh, a lot with nuclear power plants that are very old installations uh, from which the, the original documentation is a bit hard to read. It's complex um, and it takes a lot of time and it increases the cost of a project for clients. It also requires a lot of information from the customer technical documentation. We need to have um, an interface with the customer that has a strong knowledge of what's happening in the, in the, in the process. And it is also a complex procedure which requires high qualifications and can cause some delays in the schedule. But it is the key element in the Metroscope added value. And I'm going to explain why just after. The development of, a cali of and calibration of the digital twin to match um, the power plant is really what is drawing a line between normal variation of the measurements and the symptom of a failure. So here you see on the right, uh, uh, um, the first output of the metroscope, which is in blue, you have the, the actual measurement of the plant. And in green, you have the expected, uh, the expected behavior uh, uh, computed by our digital twin. And you can see that, for instance, at the very beginning, there, are, there is a gap between the measurement and the expected value. So here, 
the metroscope is going to be able to analyze this, the, the gaps for the multiple sensors and go back uh, to the root cause uh, of the problems. It, it also allows us, since we are working a lot with uh, power generation clients, to uh, assess with high precision the expected electrical outputs because that's what the client cares about, that's what it's uh, earning him money. Uh, so the, our clients really want to know what is the megawatts that they are losing because of the failures so that they can also target uh, which maintenance uh, activities are the most uh, urgent. And finally, if we want to be able to recognize failures, we need to be able to model them. Because with statistical modeling, we could not uh, we could not see we could not recognize failures that never happened. But with uh, physical modeling, here we can uh, if we understand a failure, we can model it, and then we can get a signature. And if it happens in the future, we can recognize it even if it never happened, and the client has no expertise in it. So. Uh, why we chose, uh, why we focus mostly on physics-based modeling uh, and not statistical modeling. So, statistical modeling does take less time, um, but it's not good uh, for extrapolation. Um, another advantage of statistical modeling is that it's easier to take benefit of a wider set of sensors, even if you don't know any physical equations to link them to your process. Because with physical modeling, if you have, say, a sensor of uh, a vibration somewhere that is not uh, naturally uh, embedded in your, in your modeling and you don't know how to link that with the other variables of your model, then you are not going to be able to take uh, the information of your sensors and use it. Uh, with physical modeling, it's possible to detect and identify failures that never occurred in the past. That's a very strong point for us. And you need a smaller quantity of data. Uh, so the metroscope approach takes kind of the best in uh, in both um, statistical and physical modeling in the sense that the the models that we build are uh, physical models with thermodynamic equations, but we are uh, consolidating them with statistical uh, uh, studies uh, to calibrate the parameters of the model. So what we do is some hydraulic system modeling that's quite uh, uh, quite usual. Uh, so we do steady state uh, modeling. So we are working on uh, industrial assets that are uh, mostly working at uh, full capacity for long periods of time. So we have no interest in diagnosing transients. Um, we work at system level. So we separate the, the plants in, uh, in equipments that we model and then we uh, link these equipments. Um, the regulations of the plant are not expectedly modeled since we're working in steady state, but taking into account. And um, our goal is to establish uh, pressure, mass flow, and enthalpy everywhere in the system so that we can uh, predict the value of the sensors. And last point that's very important for us, metroscope approach is not a design-based based approach. So we are not building our digital twin only with the design, uh, of the plants that dates maybe 40, 50 years ago for nuclear power plants, but we are trying to match the behavior of the current uh, plants. So you don't need to know detailed design features of your equipment because we are going to calibrate them using data. Um, so for that, we have a, a homemade library, which is called the Metroscope Modeling Library. It's derived from uh, Thermosys Pro, um, and it's a simplification of Thermosys Pro to suit our need best, uh, mainly to do uh, uh, steady state simulations only. And it's uh, um, not for now, not an entirely open source library, but you, if you are interested, we can work together and we can share uh, our library's documentation and source code. Um, so how uh, do we set up a Metroscope project? So first, um, uh, we need uh, the process and instrumentation diagram. So what your plant looks like. We need your process data. And uh, we have the Metroscope component library. So with the process and instrumentation diagram and the Metroscope component library, we are building a first model, which is a topological to reproduce um, uh, the different equipments of your plants. And then you use your process data. We get the set of your all of your historical data, and we are we are going to do calibration of the model. So find 
the value of the parameters uh, of uh, all the components that you have in your plans that best suits your, best fits your data and not the one that uh, was the theoretical design of 50 years ago. So from that, we get a nominal model. And we, with this model, we can predict the, the expected behavior of your power plants. And then we introduce failures. So that's the second modeling steps in, in, win, in which we, we, we actually model the failures that would happen on your uh, equipments. And from that, we build the failure library. And once you have the failure library and the, um, and the nominal model, then you feed that um, in our software that is hosted in the cloud. And, uh, and, and you can uh, start diagnosing what's going wrong on your power plant. Uh, so here's a, a simple example, example that we use for demonstration. Um, so this is a secondary loop of uh, an imaginary uh, nuclear power plant. So here uh, on the left, you have a steam generator. And, and this produces steam, this is a red line that's going through some turbines and generating electricity in the generator. Uh, in the top right corner. Then this all goes to the condenser and then some pumps, three heaters, and goes back into the steam generator. So this is kind of the scope that we use at Metroscope. And so on that, we have sensors, um, depending on where our clients uh, provide the sensors. So how do we calibrate? So if I take, for instance, uh, uh, heat exchangers, let's uh, take the condenser. So the condenser is basically a heat exchanger. You have steam coming, uh, like wet steam coming from the last turbine, which is going to be, uh, that's going to condense uh, in this condenser that is fed by an external uh, cold source, which is usually a river or uh, the ocean. And then, uh, and then you, get, uh, you get liquid water that you can re-inject uh, in your circuit. So this is a very crucial component uh, for, for our clients. Uh, the, the overall performance of a nuclear power plant relies a lot on the performance of the condenser. And so the, the question is, what is the heat exchange coefficient of a condenser that has been in service for 30 years? Uh, so you could, um, as is done by uh, uh, a lot of approaches, computes uh, theoretically this, uh, this exchange coefficient based on the design of your condenser. But here at Metroscope, we believe that this uh, solution is not the one that um, allows us to get the best representation of the current uh, process. So for this, we use um, statistical calibration. So our calibration strategy is based on reversing the causality of our direct model. So we have a model that is from the boundary condition of the, of the power plants uh, is capable of predicting the value of all the sensors, which we reverse that. And we say that if we can feed the model with not only the boundary conditions, but only also the value of all the sensors, then we can get the actual value of the parameters of the, of the plants that fits uh, all of the sensors. And so we do that for each data point that we have, and we get we get a distribution for each uh, parameter. So here I'm going to be giving a, an example from the condenser. So how to calibrate the main heat exchanger uh, transfer coefficient. So the equation is a very simple one. You have the total exchange heat that is proportional to uh, heat exchange coefficients and then uh, another coefficient that depends on the temperature differences. So, as I said, this coefficient could be calculated based on uh, standard formulas. But if we observe the behaviors, we see that we have um, we have a distribution for these parameters, and it, this distribution depends on the uh, inlet temperature. So we are uh, not only giving a single value here, but a polynomial that uh, takes into account the dependency of the uh, inlet temperature. And so that what you see here on this regression, you might find it weird that it fits the top uh, of the distribution and not uh, and is not going right through the distribution. So that's because the goal of our model is to represent the best performance that your plants could be expected to give. So here you can uh, you can see that if we take the best performance of these coefficients and we do that for all of the parameters of the plant, so we get uh, a state of the plants in which all the equipments work at their best capacity. 
And this best capacity is not something that's from design 30 years ago. It's something that really happened in the historical data that we take. And, and this is maybe we go back to uh, maximum 10 years. So it's really the current best behavior you could, add, you could expect from your power plant. And so once we have the, the, the best performance uh, nominal model, then we can start working on, on the failure uh, modeling. So machine learning is trendy, but at Metroscope, we learn by simulating uh, any cases. So let's say you have a, a valve on your process and, and uh, an instrumentation diagram that goes uh, from your steam generator to your condenser directly by bypassing all of the turbines. And you know by experience that these valves can leak. And then you just have to add this to the model. And that's what I added here. You just can model this leak really in Modelica uh, from the main steam line to uh, the condenser. And from that, you can guess if I activate this fader and I have a steam leaking here, you know that you are going to lose a lot of uh, produced megawatts because you are losing steam. But how much and what is the impact of this fader on the other sensor of the as a sensor of the plant so, I can, so that I can recognize it with my inferential engine. So to conclude, uh, the benefits from metroscope modeling approach that equations and associated assumptions are accessible to our clients. So we can, uh, we can make our models evolve if the client is adding sensors, if the clients know that some sensors are faulty because of measurement issues. Uh, so this model is uh, live and can evolve, and we can always go back to the assumptions to understand the diagnosis. It's possible to enrich the components library to stick to, our, to the needs of our clients. For now, we have been working only on uh, pressurized water reactors, and now we have uh, new clients that have uh, boiling water reactors, and it's uh, going to be an adaptation of our library, but does not change the overall method. Our calibration strategy is shaped to data and information available to best represent the best, uh, in the, in the best expected performance of your power plants and not some uh, design performance from 30 years ago. It is possible to model many failures, as many failures as you think may happen in your system. And from that, it's possible also to play scenarios with any configurations or conditions, which is not always something that our uh, industrial clients have at their disposal. So I thank you for your attention and your questions.